Hi everybody, my name is Lizzie, and welcome to my book review channel where I share my average opinions on mostly above average books. And today I'm going to be reviewing the book Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. Look how beautiful this cover is. I thought this was um, a really charming, delicate, quaint read um, that weaves in a lot of themes of family and friendship and um, togetherness while also having a, a flavor of magical realism. So it's just a really excellent book. I wanted to give it a big hug after I was done reading. Uh, Sarah Addison Allen published Other Birds in August of 2022, so just last month, and it was one of the September picks for Book of the Month. And it took me about two days to read. It's not too long. Uh, this hardcover... I have the jacket on backwards. Look. I opened it to see how many pages were left. It's upside down and backwards. So, let's see how many pages this book is. 290. Yeah, it's only 290 pages. It's not too long of a read. And the story, as I mentioned before, is um, really touching and heartwarming. And it felt for me like a bit of a palate cleanser. I read a lot of uh, mysteries and horror books and other birds uh, felt like a breath of fresh air. I would say the genre is magical realism, um, and it really felt like just a slice of life book. There were certainly elements of this book that, as far as I know, don't exist in real life, like ghosts or um, magical birds. So they could exist, I just wouldn't know, because if ghosts exist, they, they don't talk to me. But they do talk to the characters in this book, and it was really, really sweet. What is Other Birds about? I'm going to provide a brief, brief synopsis of the characters, the basic setting, and the basic premise, but I won't go into any spoilers, and before I discuss any spoilery thoughts, I'll put a card up uh, warning you. But overall, if you don't want to know anything about this book um, other than the general vibe of it, I would say if you want to read something that makes you want to sit in a bay window with a big blanket wrapped around you, um, having some hot chocolate, and you just want to feel um, a wide range of emotions throughout the book, but nothing too intense other than feelings of intense friendship and joy and a little bit of sadness, um, but always in a bittersweet way. You should totally read this book. I really, really loved it. So let's talk about uh, what is going on in the book Other Birds. So Other Birds takes place on a, I believe, fictional island called Mallow Island, which is off the coast of South Carolina. Mallow Island is a charming, small, um, mostly touristy little island that is famous for the um, sugar and candy that it produces. I think the Mallow and Mallow Island refers to like marshmallow, but I'm not 100% sure I, about that. I could have just put that in my head canon because it's an island that centers around its candy production. Um, but it has other things. It has a, a tourist community uh, and as a result restaurants and hotels and touristy type things. It has a um, pretty vibrant arts culture. It is also famous for being the home of a famous um, author in this world named... named... hang on. <laughs> And his name is John Cena. Named uh, Roscoe Avenger. So Roscoe Avenger is a character that exists in this world. And he brought a lot of fame to this island because it was the setting of a story that is really beloved, presumably, across the country or the world. It's just, it's pitched as this really famous story. So this famous author is from there and wrote about um, a book about characters who live there. It has this vibrant candy economy, it has arts, it has tourism, um, and it's pitched as this really fun island to live on. It also has a group of locals who, um, it seems, especially when the tourist season is over, are struggling with their economy um, and doing their best to get by. Most of the book takes place in a condo, um, a condo building. It's described as kind of like a U-shape, like a horseshoe, and in the middle there's this garden where these birds um, find refuge living there. They are Delawis birds. I need to look, Google what that looks like. 
Aww. That's so cute. Those birds uh, live in the garden that is in the center of this condo uh, building, and it's a horseshoe shape. And there are several different characters we meet who live in this building. So the first character we meet is named Zoe, and she could probably be described as our primary female protagonist. She is a young woman, um, 19 years old, and she has just moved into this building. It's actually, we meet uh, Zoe for the first time as she's moving. She's moving um, out from her family's home in Tulsa to move into uh, this condo. And the context that's very important throughout the story is that Zoe's mother, Paloma, had received this condo as a, as a present from her then husband, who is Zoe's father. Paloma and Zoe had spent summers living in this condo together and Paloma passed away when Zoe was pretty little. I don't know if they ever say exactly how old she was when her mom died, but maybe between five to seven years old. So Zoe's little and her mom dies and um, she's no longer able to go to this condo where she used to spend the summers with her mom, but the condo does remain in Zoe's name. So she um, moves there when she is ready to start college in South Carolina in the fall. And Zoe is leaving behind um, not, a, not a great family life. She has a um, pretty disengaged dad. She has a stepmom who wants to have this very aesthetic, Instagrammable life that doesn't align with having Zoe in it. She has two half-siblings who Zoe refers to as her stepmom's kids. So I think that probably tells you that Zoe isn't very well connected to this family. And she moves from Tulsa to South Carolina to live in the condo that she used to spend the summers with her mom um, to get ready for school. And she has this hope of, of reconnecting with her mom um, and, and kind of feeling her presence there. So it's really, it's very sweet. And Zoe brings along with her um, an invisible bird that is her best friend and kind of sidekick um, that she calls Pigeon. That's kind of one, one of the characters that's living in this condo. And then briefly, we meet the other ones. We meet um, Lisbeth, who is very cantankerous and um, the neighborhood complainer. So anytime anybody makes any noise in the condo, Lisbeth is very upset. She doesn't like people talking in the garden. She doesn't like people talking. Um, she doesn't like people, <laughs> which is like, I get it. She's quite difficult. Lisbeth's sister, Lucy, also lives in her own condo in this building, um, and no one ever sees Lucy. They can see the glow of a cigarette that she smokes um, through the curtain, so they know she's there, but she never leaves the apartment and no one ever sees her. And then we have Charlotte, who is a young woman in her mid-twenties, who um, is a henna artist and she's living in the condo building. And there's also Mac, who is a um, gourmet chef. I just really liked him. I thought he was a great character. He lives in the building with his cat that he doesn't tell anyone about because you can't have pets in this building, which is so sad because I want to live in this building and I would never leave my cat. So I guess I can't move to fictional Mallow Island. And then the final person uh, who's kind of living in this condo is Fraser, who manages it. So he manages the buildings, he does the maintenance care. I don't think he actually lives, no, yeah, he doesn't live in the condo, but he's there all the time. And he, he's kind of like a father figure to everybody there. And so these are the main characters that we first get introduced to. Zoe is very excited to feel that she's reconnecting with her mom, and she also wants to get to know all her neighbors. And I don't want to spoil anything uh, because this book is short and um, the plot moves pretty quickly. But an event happens that forces the characters to interact with each other and it weaves this really beautiful tale of friendship and love and letting things go and coming together. And there's also some other characters that we meet throughout. At times there are elements that if the genre were different or if the story were written differently, it could be spooky or it could have an atmosphere of suspense because it is at times dealing with conflict in a story that um, can have a heightened sense of urgency but other birds never elevates the intensity uh, of the story it always feels very charming and delicate in a way that I liked like I said I felt like this book was a palate cleanser 
those are my non-spoilery thoughts on other birds. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And if you don't want to hear my spoilery thoughts, then you should close out of this video within the next two seconds because I'm going to be jumping into some spoilers. Okay, so I want to talk about my spoilery thoughts of other birds. My spoilers for this book are not the same level of emotional intensity that I usually feel when I talk about spoilers for other books that I read because I normally read a lot of mysteries or horror books and so when I have spoilers I usually feel like oh my god I can't believe this happened or like oh my god they absolutely overlooked this huge red flag in this character and this book's not like that this book is is just really sweet and um, engaging and lovely mostly the main things that are staying with me in this book are um, the the love that I feel I've developed for all of the characters I was thinking about how attached I felt to these characters and they're not perfect people they have done things that I I think weren't necessarily handled well or sometimes not great communicators or sometimes they get overly involved in things or underly involved in things and yet I found myself wanting to defend them and it kind of made me think of how you know if you have a friend who does something that's objectively wrong like you have a friend who definitely has screwed something up or made a mistake but you know that friend so well and you love them and you want to be like it's okay like I I still totally see you as a nuanced person and I see you as someone who is still totally lovable. That is how I felt about all these characters and it felt like a good reminder that if you get to know people you probably would see most people that way. You know in terms of a twist I guess there's a twist that Fraser is actually a Roscoe Avenger. I can't remember that author's name for some reason. Zoe alluded to wondering how Fraser had all the money to fix the condos. I was like oh it's totally gotta be because he's Roscoe. I like that twist. I thought it showed a, a, another layer of depth to Fraser and helped us understand better why he was so attached to his community and these people who live in the condo. He got a little bit of depth himself by being someone with this rich history of going from uh, being a famous author to living a more subdued life as much as he can while still being so engaged with the people that he loves. You know, he doesn't follow this arc of being a famous author to being a jaded and closed in man who hates people and hates the fame and hates everything. He goes from being a really famous author who just doesn't like the notoriety that comes with it, but he still loves the people that he cares about and is still very engaged in, in his world. I really like the character of Zoe. At times she did feel a little bit young uh, for a 19 year old. I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just jaded, but oh, my cat's here. Hi. Maybe I'm jaded and Zoe is realistic for her age, but her persistent optimism and naivete felt a little bit too young to be a 19 year old. Um, but again, I still, I still love the character of Zoe. I felt like there were times where she really had the energy of a little sister. For example, even before she met Charlotte, she sees Charlotte have a guy, you know, leave her house in the middle of the night. As the reader, you're making the assumption that um, Charlotte just hooked up with that guy and he's just leaving at like two or three in the morning. And the next day when Zoe discovers that Elizabeth has died, she's going around asking everyone what happened and she says to Charlotte, did you see anything last night? And Zoe saw the man leave Charlotte's apartment and Charlotte says, no, I was just getting, I was just getting a good night's sleep last night. And Zoe's like, oh, okay. Well, what about that guy leaving your place at two in the morning? Zoe, Zoe, <laughs> like let Charlotte breathe. But it was so sweet too, because it showed Zoe's innocence and naivete and enthusiasm and just genuine authenticity. I also loved that Pigeon was actually the spirit of Zoe's mom. I didn't make that connection until it was revealed at the end. And I thought that was beautiful because we see that there are these ghosts like Camille and Lisbeth and Paloma slash Pigeon who are following these characters until they're ready to release them. And of course, if Zoe lost her mom when she was like seven years old, she's going to be seeing the spirit of her mom as an animal, like an imaginary uh, an imaginary friend more than an adult mother figure because of the age at which she lost her mom. So I thought that was really sweet. I just loved 
all the symmetry in this book with the themes. You know, you have Mac who can't let people go, or he can't specifically, he can't let Camille go. And you have Charlotte who says that she's running away from everyone, but she also can't let go of her past. Like she's holding on to the real Charlotte slash who she, person she calls Peppers, um, you know, all of her dreams. And, and then they end up letting those things go and she and Mac come together. And then you meet Zoe, who's initially starts off with the goal of wanting to connect with her mom, realizing that she had her mom with her uh, through Pigeon and it was time to let her mom go because she made all these friends and community within the condo building. And Oliver's the same way. He's trying to run away from his past and realize that he was ready to return and to reintegrate himself into his community and realize how much he missed the people there. And I just thought it was a beautiful story. It brought a lot of hope and a lot of joy. And I think I saw in the author's note that the author wrote this um, either following or during um, a period of time in her life where she lost her mom and her sister in, in, within a short duration of each other. And that adds a layer to this book as well because it is about loss and death and there's a little bit of grief in there as well. Other Birds is a great story. I feel like I'm going to want to reread it uh, when it's snowing outside because it just has the cozy vibes all the way through. And if you want something that's a palate cleanser, I totally recommend you read it. I feel so chill right now even just talking about this book. Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. I highly recommend it. And if you like my review, you should like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you later. Bye.